Breaking news situation that we see clearly from Transguy. This is I-37 at US-281 where they split. You can see the traffic is backing up now. We kind of saw the first indications of this. We've also seen a second location of a grass fire. You can kind of see the dark burned grass off to the right side of the highway there. There was a fire truck out there moments ago. Uh, I believe they moved further off where you see some of the smoke out there. Yeah, and it looks like maybe that smoke is lessening just a bit from the first time we checked in on that. Hopefully that is the case as we know how dry it is out there. We know the fire danger is extremely high right now. We're still trying to find out exactly how much area is burned, how traffic's being affected, what might be going on. As soon as we get further information, more detail, we'll be sure to bring it to you. I know it's happened to me. Have you driven by a building, a park, a street and thought, I wonder where that name came from? There are several San Antonio names you see over and over across the city. So it got us asking, who are these people? What did they do that was so significant? Here's Case that explains San Antonio namesakes. Tobin, Modla, McAllister, Wurzbuck. Who were they? To help us answer that, let's tell you who this is. Tell me your name. David Green. And what's the title of your book? Place Names of San Antonio and Surrounding Counties. He's an orthopedic surgeon by trade and a lover of trivia and history by trait. I was on the faculty of the medical school for eight years, and my office was on Floyd Curl Drive. And for eight years, I asked people who was Floyd Curl, and nobody could tell me. That curiosity launched years of research for his book. Floyd Curl Drive is one of the main roads running through the medical center on San Antonio's northwest side. So who was Mr. Curl, or rather, Reverend Curl? Turns out he was a Methodist minister. He chaired the first meeting when some businessmen and medical people got together and said, let's build a medical center. And the first building out there was Methodist Hospital. And so they named the only street in the whole medical center for Floyd Curl. San Antonio has no shortage of streets bearing someone's name, but there are two that tend to raise a lot of questions and not just about their namesakes. People always wonder why we have two Wurzbach roads. Well, it's a great story. William Wurzbach and Harry Wurzbach were brothers. William, the oldest, he was a Texas congressman from 1895 to 1897. In 1907, Four, William Wurzbach and his father-in-law Gustav Schmelzer bought 1,400 acres of what is now the medical center. The dirt road that once led to Wurzbach's home became Wurzbach Road and yes, Wurzbach Parkway. From Ingram Road to Lock Hill Selma, it's Wurzbach Road. Then from Lock Hill Selma to O'Connor Road near I-35, it's Wurzbach Parkway, both named for William. So, where does Harry Wurzbach come from? He becomes the first Republican elected to Congress from Texas since Reconstruction. He had uh, served in the Spanish-American War and was very involved in veterans organizations, so he's much beloved for that reason. Of issues like civil rights, he uh, voted for an anti-lynching bill, for instance, uh, which was an act of great courage on his part, certainly. People wanted to do something for Harry. So they went down to city council and lobbied to get a road named for Harry. People were upset because there was already a Wurzbach Parkway and they thought they'd be confused. They lost and it is confusing. <laughs> a giant building downtown bears the name of a giant San Antonio legend. Ah, Henry. Henry B. The Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Henry B. Gonzalez is one of the most significant San Antonians, uh, I would argue. He was in Congress for more than 30 years, but he started out in San Antonio City Council. Then Gonzalez became the first Mexican-American elected to the Texas Senate in 1956, and the first Mexican-American from Texas elected to U.S. Congress in 1961. Incredible dedication to attacking and speaking out against segregation, segregation of Mexico. Americans uh, in the 1950s. He was seen as a person who 
cared about people no matter their station. His real claim to fame was when they had the big banking savings and loan scandal. He upset a lot of people, but the people who didn't like him said at least he's trying to get to the bottom of the crisis and make things better for everyday San Antonians. Another name you see over and over, McAllister. Walter McAllister was mayor of San Antonio from 1961 to 1971. He was instrumental in helping expand San Antonio College. There's Mayor McAllister with the president of the Conservation Society, Mrs. Brooks Martin, or Pinky Martin as she was known, and of course the famous Congressman Henry B. Gonzalez. They're all smiling here, which is a little unusual because actually the Conservation Society fought Mayor McAllister for most of his tenure in office because they were against the highway that was going to be built through Brackenridge Park. But he had the vision that we needed a road from downtown to the airport, which is 281, and it bears his name. Eventually it was built because of the Conservation Society's opposition. Uh, the city was unable to use federal funds, so it did it with state and local funds. Sometimes it's called McAllister Freeway to honor him, and sometimes, at least initially, it was called McAllister Freeway because some folks resented that that road plowed through their front yards and their backyards. And so they said, he should get credit or discredit. Now from one name to many, the Tobin family. The Tobin family is, a, they were huge philanthropists in San Antonio. John W. Tobin, uh, who was mayor during one of the great periods in San Antonio history, the time the Conservation was, Society was founded in the 1920s, was a great period of growth for the city. When they built Almost Dam, when they had a big flood downtown, and he was instrumental in doing that. Mayor Tobin's nephew was Edgar Tobin. His story is on display at the Whitty Museum. Edgar Tobin, and he was a World War I ace pilot, came back and started an aerial photography company. But they were really not a wealthy family, and Edgar Tobin's the one that uh, created this aerial surveys and created a mapping company that all the oil and gas companies of the day uh, needed to have these Tobin maps. So that's where the family fortune really came from. Edgar's wife, Margaret, had a love for art, theater, and symphony. And she started the San Antonio Symphony in 1939. She passed on that passion to their son, Robert L.B. Tobin, who the Tobin Center is named after. Robert was a, a born collector. He probably has the biggest collection of theater arts in the entire world. And that's now known as the Tobin Collection of Theater Arts, which is housed at the McNay Art Museum today. So when you think of something like the Tobin Center, you, you, you think of the arts because these are the people that help create uh, some of our foundational arts organizations. Education is the legacy of our next name, Frank Modla Jr. We're standing right now in the Center Frank Modla building on campus. The campus of Texas A&M San Antonio. Well, his major dream was to bring a public university to the south side of San Antonio. And he labored literally for years to do this, to get this support. Modla served in the Texas House and Senate from 1972 to 2006. He helped bring the Toyota plant to San Antonio and redevelop the old Kelly Air Force Base. But he didn't live to see his dream dream for a Southside University become reality. He died in a house fire in 2006. A&M San Antonio became a standalone university in 2009. We view him as an iconic figure on our campus and our uh, campus colors are silver and black and what we call Madla Maroon. He was just really a, a constant voice for the people of this area. And those are just a few San Antonio namesakes in a city full of so many stories to tell. A lot of people don't want to read a history book or hear about a uh, historical event, but if it's in a place or a place name, the park is named, the street is named, the building is named, then it's part of your regular everyday life. It's not this separate category of history, it's just part of life. And it connects you to people who were there before. Anything we missed? Oh yeah, we, we missed about 990 of these things. <laughs> The name of one of our interviewees might have sounded familiar, Dolph Briscoe IV. He's the grandson of the former Texas governor, Dolph Briscoe Jr. So see, no shortage of stories around here. Nope. To check out all of our KSAT Explains coverage, scan this QR code or find us on the KSAT YouTube page. We'll be right back.
U.S. home building is on the rise. New construction ramped up in July, beating expectations. Single family housing starts climbed nearly 7% from June. This comes amid low inventory in the existing home market. While interest in new homes got a boost, building permits were essentially flat in July. Permits are also down 13% from a year ago. All right, you know, I think it's about time for this weather to start taper, the temperatures to start tapering down. <laughs> and maybe it's going to happen, but not before tomorrow. No, not before tomorrow. We actually have a lot to talk about. We have record challenging heat still going to continue for a few days and then a shift in our weather pattern leading to rain chances coming back into the picture. Right now it's all about the heat, 102. It's a current reading. By 9 o'clock, we're 94, midnight, 86, and then tomorrow morning, 78 degrees to start the day. We're going to talk more about the rain chances and what variables we need to take into account in just a bit. All right, I've been given a lot of side eye to Thursday in the seven day forecast because <laughs> 107? Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, and, and nobody wants Myra side eye. Oh, yeah. No, but you it's entertaining too, every you so too often. would know well. We are experts yeah. in the Myra side eye. And <laughs> Well versed. Trust me, you don't want it. In the look. <laughs> yes, we are. And, <laughs> you know, we, I, I think, Meyer, you'll be happy to hear that next week our weather pattern is going to shift. That also reintroduces the chance of rain and it should drop temperatures a little bit. There are some variables and some uncertainty to it, but let's take a look at the going forecast right now. No shot at rain the next couple of days, but by Monday, that's when we see a 10% chance. I know that's nothing significant, but it's something and it signifies a bit of a change. And then Tuesday, we're at 20%, Wednesday, 30%. These numbers are likely to change. They could go up and they could go down in the days ahead. We're trying to predict a system that hasn't even developed yet and hasn't even formed. We can't even measure it yet. Now today in Catula, look at that, a nice sight. So they glisten off the concrete, that's from rain. That's beautiful and you see some of those big fat raindrops there falling down from the sky. We like to see that. Right now, a lot of the rain that we had out there is starting to dissipate and really fall apart and it's losing the daytime heating. It's losing some of that energy. Not much left out there south of town off to the west of San Antonio, which is where we saw some of the rain yesterday. Valverde County up the Devil's River. Still one downpour there, but this is all coming to an end. And these little ripples that you see, I believe that's the mid-level cloud cover uh, being picked up by the Doppler radar. Anyway, no showers or storms around San Antonio. Here's the big picture upper level high, the big blue H, it's centered over the four corners, so over the desert southwest basically. That gives us this northerly flow aloft, which has opened the door for that weak cold front we had yesterday, which is now down south of San Antonio and really not in very impactful, but this is going to change. The upper level high, it drifts far north of us as we get into the weekend and early next week. That means this Easterly steering flow aloft. The wind coming out of the east opens the door for a disturbance to come off the Gulf of Mexico. And it looks like one will develop this weekend around Cuba and move into the Gulf of Mexico then. By Monday, Tuesday time frame, there's a 20% chance of it developing into a tropical depression. But more importantly, it's going to have a lot of tropical moisture with it and rain making energy, which is going to then move inland at some point into next week. So here are the variables. The weekend will have the rain making energy enter the Gulf of Mexico. The rain is going to move inland. Big question mark now. Where inland? Basically anywhere from Brownsville to Louisiana. The solutions are all over the place. The possibilities are all over the place. Some of it just depends on exactly where that upper level high sets up over the upper Midwest. So many variables we'll be tracking. And again, we're trying to predict a system that hasn't even formed yet. We can't even measure it before even predicting it. So we'll keep you updated on that. Check back in for, for, the, deep, for the latest. Today, 18th. 100 degree day in a row. We're making a run at 21 and it looks like we're going to do it in the days ahead. Made it to 104 San Angelo, 103 Abilene, 105 in Austin. That was a record for them. Del Rio up to 106 along with Pleasanton. Tomorrow we start the day at 78. 
By noon, we're already up to 97. We'll have a lot of mixing tomorrow, which means the afternoon humidity is going to be very low, which in turn can really boost that temperature efficiently to 107, which would be a record by three degrees, even close to 110 along the Rio Grande tomorrow. Lavernia 107 along with Hondo and Stone Oak 105. Again, tropical moisture possible next week. We're, we're going to keep you updated. This situation is fluid. It'll be changing. We'll have the latest check back in. All right. Thanks, Adam. The buzz coming up next. To the buzz now and Harrison Ford's character, Indiana Jones famously cannot stand snakes. Now the actor has a species named after him. I'm going to try this. Meet Tachymenoidus Harrison Ford Eye. <laughs> now that's a mouthful. That's just so funny to me. Scientists discovered this new type of slender snake in Peru last year. A single male snake of this species measuring 16 inches long was found sunbathing in a swamp in the Andes Mountains. They named the species after Ford in honor of his decades long environmental advocacy. Tachymenoidus. <laughs> Harrison Ford out. <laughs> it's good for dogs to socialize with humans and other pets. According to a new study, it can even help them live longer, healthier lives. Researchers looked at more than 21,000 dogs. Yeah, they found that social time with both people and other animals had the greatest influence on healthy aging among dogs. The effect of social interaction five times more than anything else they compared it to, such as family finances, household children, or the dog parents age C truly without socialization. Things for dogs can get rough. We'll be right back. Yes, more triple digit heat and we should have our 56th 100 degree day by Monday and tomorrow, by the way, 107 should that verify hottest day so far this year and then a shift in our pattern shot at rain. We're going to have more updates. That shot at rains next week. Thursday, I'm looking at you. Okay. Yeah.